feel like after that, let's get out of here. I need to say radio just to go with it. But yes, we're still sitting with Karula. She is now sat down under the shade of a knobthorn tree. And there's still a couple of magpie shrikes hanging around. And every time they alarm and basically shout in bird language that there's a leopard here, she gets very upset and she starts to snarl and sort of look up at the tree. And that's always very funny when leopards do that, when they sort of express their frustrations towards the birds because she's trying very hard to stay hidden and they are ruining, of course, her chances of catching anything in this area. Are you turning into a vegetarian leopard now, girl? No, of course she's not turning into a vegetarian leopard. She's had a little munch of grass as uh, as she went around. She, mmm, uh, delicious. <laughs> she's, and this is always was my favourite thing is when I had guests from all over the world. Is everyone knows, of course, that the big cats are predators and they hunt for all sorts of different antelope species and really anything that they can get their, their paws on. And when you'd come across a lion or a leopard uh, feeding on grass, they always used to look at me as if I was completely bonkers and I had no idea what we were doing. That was, of course, until I obviously explained her behavior. Now, often cats will, fe will feed on grasses like this. And normally what it will do is it will actually induce vomiting. But Karula looks a bit thin, hey, David? You can see her hips are sticking out a little bit, so she's possibly sacrificed whatever she caught, or, or maybe Hosanna actually caught his own meal. Maybe it wasn't Karula at all. But it's nothing to be worried about, so if you are getting a bit concerned, I promise you that she will be fine. This is very, very common for the cats to go without food for a couple of days, and of course they drastically lose condition. But just as fast as they lose their condition, they are able to put it back on again. So don't worry too much. I have faith in this beautiful cat. And I think by tonight, she probably would have found, if she keeps walking through this drainage system, she's probably going to come across a couple of Steenbok or common daker. Or hopefully if she moves towards the more open area, she might get a herd of impala. And I think that's ideally what she's going for at this, at, at this time, especially if she's a little bit thin and, and weaker than what she'd normally be. And it must be tough for her. It must be very tiring as we're moving through, well, while it's still quite hot during the day. Because as she does this, she's using a lot more energy than what she would be using on a cooler night. You can see she's panting. She's definitely trying to cool herself down. And it is, it's very warm here. Now, Pete B, you're actually wondering about if, if there's a specific reason that Karula is feasting on grass. Maybe she has feeling slightly unwell or something along those lines. Like I said, normally it induces vomiting when they do eat heaps of grass like that. A small amount won't do them any harm. I don't think that does too much to their bodies. But you see it, you see it often. Dogs will eat it, eat, but they'll eat copious amounts of it, of course, and then it makes them get sick. She just ate a little bit, and I don't think that that is enough to, of course, uh, make her start vomiting. But she's she's looking desperately for something, any sign of movement. We're going to try and stick with her, and I'm really hoping she doesn't cross this drainage system. Otherwise, it's going to be, well, an interesting afternoon. But let's go back across to a Byron who has got a feathery friend.